Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English. And today we are looking at a super important question. We are looking at the 40 mark question. We are looking at 50% of the paper. We are looking at paper one, question five, and that is writing a story. Now, this question, guys, is, 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 is deemed as the most important question when it comes to the English language paper one exam. And correctly so, it's worth the highest marks. And up and down the country, guys, in schools, teachers and students are prepping and planning answers with lots of characters, with amazing settings and rises and falls in their stories, awesome plots. But then AQA comes and poops all over this parade because what did AQA do? Guys, every year, right, after the GCSEs, AQA, they, well, every example does, but at the moment we're talking about AQA, they put all the answers together and they put the best ones, the mediocre ones and the worst ones together and they send them off to all the schools um, that use AQA. And then these schools, they use these answers to check their marking. So, for example, they will look at one of the answers that AQA has given a grade 9 to and they'll check one of their answers that in their school that they've given a grade 9 to and they'll check to see if their marking is accurate against AQAs. Now today we're going to read an entire answer that was published by AQA. So this wasn't marked by me. This wasn't marked by John down the road. This was marked and published officially by AQA. So you can't really question their marking. I've I find it questionable, but it's irrelevant because they've given it a grade nine. Now, for a very, very long time, guys, I've always said to my students, don't write about sad topics because sad topics are quite depressing to read. And if you look at trends, sad topics tend to get lower marks. But AQA also pooped over everything I said because in the year June 2019, the question was, write a story I'll write a story with the title abandoned and this student guys came into the exam and it appears they poured their heart and soul into this exam now <laughs> i'm laughing because um the person who wrote the story must have been going through a really tough time um, in their life but it got them a grade nine so it is what it is now, this student, guys, in the entire story had one character. And in the entire story, they had one setting. And to be even more precise, guys, this student's character in this story doesn't even move. They sit in a chair the whole story and they don't even get up or go for a walk. All they do is they take their phone out of their pocket and they look at a message that they've sent a girl, a woman. And their message, guys, oh, must have hurt. Their message was left on the blue ticks. Their message was left on red. They never got a text back. And they're waiting, and they're waiting. But this girl, this woman is not texting back and this character feels absolutely abandoned. And AQA gave this story a grade nine. And I'm happy that they gave this story a grade nine because this story is living proof for every single one of you that don't get lost in trying to recreate Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter with a crazy adventure with 10 different characters, five different settings. Keep it simple. Think about it. This student guys wrote a story and they got a grade nine and the character sits in a chair, doesn't move, checks their phone, girl doesn't text back and they felt abandoned. This is proof that this question isn't about writing a story. It is about an English language exam. And this is why they got a grade nine. They did not get a grade nine because their plot was on fire. They got a grade nine because their language, their vocabulary, their structure and their punctuation was on point. And you will see that when we go over the answer. Okay guys, this is the grade nine response that was written by that student. Now, before we discuss and go over it, let's just have a quick read. Now, first things first, guys, as you can see, they've not written a lot. They've got one, two, three decent sized paragraphs and the other paragraphs are very, very short. 
but let's read. Fran returned to his seat beneath the palm trees and chirping birds he had become acquainted with in his time beneath them. The chair itself was not the pinnacle of relaxation he had been convinced of earlier on in his life. It creaks loudly filling the vast emptiness surrounding him. However, it was quite comfortable and his only source of relief from an otherwise disappointing, wasteful, ruthless, hopeless day. He had been waiting for hours. Friend reached into the depths of his pocket and retrieved the foam his grandchildren had recently bought him in hopes of lightening his otherwise lonely life. Surely, he thought, surely she has said something. But once again, as he desperately tried to find some kind of message from the mysterious woman whose presence had been promised to him, nothing. Friend was shocked. He had thought that with the wisdom he had gained from his old age, that he would know who he could trust. They had seemed so friendly at first. With an atmosphere of joy and eagerness following them wherever they went, their connection had been instant. After talking with her for what felt like hours, Fen had promised to meet with her again, and had vigilantly ensured that he would be available at a moment's notice to have his dreams fulfilled once more by merely being in her presence. He had never dreamed of what happened, but upon his arrival, he was greeted by the same empty feeling that was present in him now. Nothing. As he sat back in his seat and reminisced, on the past few days, like his life was flashing before his eyes, Friend realised that there would be no surprise arrival, no future hope, no enjoyment to feel, nothing. Friend drowned in nostalgia as he rested, resigned in his chair, a tower which became enveloped by the darkness at the disappearance of the sun. Abandoned. And that is all she wrote. That is the story. That is what the student wrote to get a grade 9. And they got a very high grade 9. Is this plot amazing? As a story, no. But as an English language answer, this plot is perfect, guys. Perfect. Why? Because they've only got one character, because they've only got one setting, because there's not a lot going on, they're not rushing to finish their story. Because they're not writing a lot. Instead, they control and they have focused more on language devices, vocabulary, punctuation and structure. Now, let's go over what is really good about this answer. Let's begin and look at their punctuation. Let's pick out a few. They've got, they've got, they've got, they've got ellipsis over there. They've got speech marks over there. And they've got brackets over there. That's just some things that come to your mind straight away. Then let's look at some of their vocabulary. Um, they've got the word reminisced. They've got the word nostalgia. They've got the words in this context over there. The word vigilantly is a good word. But that's their vocab, that's their punctuation. Now, if we're looking at this structure, guys, if we're looking at this structure, just some easy peasy wins uh, that we can see. You can see that they've got repetition and they've got short paragraphs the whole way through and they repeat nothing, nothing, nothing. And then they end it with abandoned. You can see they've got long and short sentences. A clear example of that, guys, is over here where you've got a long sentence followed by a short sentence. So just small thing like this, and they've got loads more the whole way through it. Um, and then guys, you've got lots of language devices. You've got onomatopoeias, where it talks about the chirping birds. You've got, well, this is a structural device, but you've got a list guys, disappointing, wasteful, ruthless, hopeless day. Um, you've got hyperboles, you've got personification. It's packed with language. But what is my point guys? Right in front of you, is a grade nine response that is published by AQA. Now, I don't want you guys to copy the story. If you copy the story, you're setting yourself up to fail because this is not your work. Um, you can use the idea, you can take motivation, but don't put this, in, this into your exam um, because you're gonna get in trouble. But what do I want you all to take away from this video? Paper one, question five. Whenever I say it, I say story because paper one, question five, guys, don't get it twisted. It is not about writing a story. Paper one, question five, is looking at your English language ability. So don't get lost in trying to have an amazing, crazy plot. Keep it simple, just like Fen. Keep it controlled, just like the student. And keep it realistic. Can you write this in 45 minutes? Guys, I hope you found this video beneficial. I hope you take some motivation from this answer. And I hope you really walk away understanding what you're doing here. You're sitting an English language exam. You're not entering a creative writing competition. And I pray, guys, that whoever wrote this, they did eventually get a text back. Okay, let's finish the video here, guys. As always, it's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.